We now begin our service in which the choir will lead us in the choiral in Troy, hymn 121. 121 in the voice in praise, verse 1, verse 3, and verse 4. And invite us now to sing to the glory of God. Invite us to make prayerful responses to our call to worship. We gather as people on a journey. We believe and we have doubts. We do good and we sin. We are imperfect humans and still beloved by God. Love and grace, hope and faith, these are essence of the one we call God. We seek forgiveness and grace from the one and from those Assured of that grace, we are ready to grow again. We yearn for a new way, a new perspective, and a clear path. Though we are full of trust and full of doubt, we are here. Speak to God, continue creating us. Inspire our hearts, enlighten our minds, guide our actions. Amen. Now sing to the glory of God, Him. 142, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
Indeed, this is a time of rejoicing as we celebrate our risen Lord, as he is present with us, our Lord and our King. Let us continue in the spirit of rejoicing for those who are in Chapel Church this morning and those who are joining us uh, via live stream in this time of celebration of uh, our risen Lord. Invite us now as we prayerfully respond and pray together in this time of prayer. Let us all pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The commandments of our Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is here, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Second is this, you shall love the Lord, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Let us in silence confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness. We have this moment of silence. Let's pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against each other in thought and word and deed, in the evil that we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weaknesses, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grind that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear the good news if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Now invite us to stand as we say together the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May be seated. This time we have the notices and announcements. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Worship to today's Welcome to this morning's service, <clears throat> the second Lord's Sunday of the resurrection. We also welcome all our brothers and sisters who are viewing via um, YouTube and Facebook. Church, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> As for our superintendent ministers, monthly newsletter, the theme for this month of April is faithfulness, a faithful church, obedience of faith. And the main focus is reaching out to the lapsed and cease to meet members. Where he quotes Romans 1, verses 3 to 5, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and he was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name. Permit me to read his letter to you this morning. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has risen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we, are invited <clears throat> we are invited to reflect on the phrase that Paul uses in his letter to the Romans, which is obedience of faith. In expounding on the term obedience of faith, a Catholic priest, Michael Crosby and writer identified three key stages of faith in connection with human life, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Childhood faith is learning about practices associated with religion that are to be observed. This represents faith received from others. It often involves learning religious religion's rules, regulations and rituals. The scholastic theologians believe that if people understood these rules, they then could be clear about how to translate them into moral living. Obedience is defined by observance of this way of living. Adolescent faith involves embracing what others say about someone or something and expressing this receiving teaching, received teaching through various practices. This interprets faith as, faith as the data coming from the testimony of another or of others, especially the leaders of the group to which one belongs. Here, obedience is defined by acceptance of the authoritative teaching of leaders and even non-authoritative decisions such as those by, a, by the bishop. Adult faith represents a way of knowing someone in whom another can believe and trust. It is personal faith. The obedience involved here involves fidelity to the demands connected with maintaining the relationship itself. Child-grounded faith stresses observance. Adolescent faith stresses belonging. Adult faith stresses a personal, a personal relationship of trust that leads to a commitment. Pondering upon these three stages of faith and reflecting on our own journey, it is pertinent that we evaluate 
which stage of faith we find ourselves in, and our task is to allow the Spirit of God to nurture and journey with us to a more matured faith, which is grounded in our personal relationship with Jesus. The first and second stages of faith involves observance to rituals and practices of the church, and the essence of belonging, which is grounded to, the, to attachments and preferences either to the institution, leader, or type of leadership. A sad reality, though, is that a good number of so-called Christians and Methodists are still in the immature stages of their faith with commitments. Faithfulness and loyalty, grounded mostly in terms of observ observance to church practices, rituals and traditions that are more important than one's personal relationship with God. In a recent leadership training with our circuit, an, observ an observance was shared about the lack of commitment within the general membership of our church. There may be many contributing factors. However, one of these factors could be the level of faith in which much is left to be desired. On this note, an, adult, an adulthood faith is one of which stress a personal relationship of trust that leads to a life of commitment that is not conditional to the institution, preferences, leaders, but a life committed to the example of Jesus Christ. Let us all as Methodists be, be, be the faithful church that has the obedience of faith, committed, loyal, and live a life that exemplifies the life, the teaching of Jesus Christ through guidance, inspiration, and leadership of the Holy Spirit. Yours in Christ, this is from our Superintendent Minister, Reverend Smith. <clears throat> the notices for the week and in general the month are as follows. <clears throat> Again, I reiterate, this month of April, the spirit of the, the the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Our main focus is to reach out to laps and cease to meet members. Under our discipline, laps members are members in good standing without sufficient reason, persistent, are persistently absent themselves from Christian fellowship and from the Lord's Supper. Cease to meet members are those for a prolonged period of being absent, we are now encouraged to pray, call, and reach out to them with love. At this time, we, congr we congratulate the Methodist Combined Easter concert held last Sunday at 6.30 p.m. entitled The Majesty and Glory of the Resurrection. A special thanks goes out to Sister Deanna Clark and Sister Beverly Henry for their leadership and dedication, and all the members of the choir. Our appreciation is also extended to members who attended, friends, and those who were able to come and support. So Sister Bev, kindly extend appreciation to Sister Deanna for this wonderful concert which we had. And the choir members, we want to thank you and we show great and deepest appreciation for this. And members of the congregation, if you had invited a friend, a family member who is not present today, kindly extend our appreciation for their support. Thank you. Our Wednesday program continues as normal with fasting from 6 to 1 p.m. as you are all are able. Our morning prayer meetings is from 5 to 6 a.m. And our midday service is from 12 to 1 p.m. Wednesday passed, we had Holy Communion. So this Wednesday, there's no Holy Communion. Holy Communion is administered every first Wednesday of the month. Bible study will be on break for the next two weeks and will resume on the third week of April 
as these first two weeks, we have quite a few congregation and pastoral meetings. Local preaching, preachers meeting will be held tomorrow, Monday, at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The link will be circulated. <clears throat> Grosile Pastoral and Council Meeting and Hugh Carson Brown Pastoral and Council Meeting will be held on Tuesday and Thursday, respectively, at the chapels. Our Castries Pastoral and Council Meeting will be held this Wednesday at 5.15 in this chapel. Members to attend this meeting are congregational stewards, care fund stewards, pre local preachers, class leaders and assistant class leaders, baptism role secretary, congregation representatives, commission lay workers, and leaders of the various organizations and groups. So, so those who are here today, and if you notice that your class leader or your assistant class leader is absent, please give them a call and let them know that our meeting, pastoral meeting, will be on Wednesday at 5.15. And we expect to see, again, class leaders, assistant class leaders, leaders of the various organizations of the church, women in action, choir, choir leaders, etc. <clears throat> Forestiers pastoral and, and council meeting will be held next Wednesday, the 17th at the chapel. Our circuit resource and development committee meeting will be held next Monday, the 15th of April at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The link will be circulated. Members to attend are ministers, circuit stewards, circuit accountant, congregation stewards, and committee members. Again, those who are present, if you know, um, if you realize that your leader is not in, Congregation Steward is not in, please pass the message along. Nomination of Circuit Stewards. Members are invited to submit nominations to the church office or to the, the superintendent minister for the election of Circuit Stewards at the end of this month during the Circuit Council meeting. So if you see anybody worthy of being a Circuit Steward, Nominations are open from now until the end of this month, and your nominations could be dropped in at the church office or given to our superintendent minister. Our circuit pastoral council will be held on Monday, 22nd of April at 6 p.m. at this chapel. Members to attend are the ministers, circuit stewards, local preachers, class leaders and assistant class leaders, congregation stewards from each congregation. We also have our circuit online press session will be held at the end of April on April 28th from 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Details will be circulated later. <clears throat> we also have our circuit leadership seminar, sorry, I said prayer online, but our circuit leadership seminar will be held on the Saturday, 4th of May. This will be circulated at a later date. We also have circuit council meeting, which will be held on the 29th of April at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Again, we ask for circuit stewards, commission lay workers, circuit accountant, Congregation stewards, representatives from the congregations, circuit organization leaders, representatives from circuit pastoral council, lay representatives to the district. We also have Forest Year Methodist Church dinner will be held on May 1st. It's a holiday at the Forest Year Combined School at 7.30 p.m. The tickets are at the cost of $85. Your attire would be formal, dress code formal. 
This is in May, so you have enough time to plan and decide whether you go or not. Our district proclamation conference hosted by the St. Lucia Circuit will be held from Thursday, April 25th to Saturday, April 27th under the theme, Transform to be Ambassadors, Shaping Christian Conscience for a New Caribbean. All interested members are welcome to register and join the different sessions. Now to finances, our financial update. Castries Congregation for the month of February, our monthly target was $4,000. However, we collected a total of $3,400, giving us a difference of $600 below our target. Our assessment for the sixth month, September last year to February, our assessment was $24,000. However, we received $24,375, giving us a difference of $375, a little over. And our circuit income and expenditure report for the months of September, 2023-2024, our total income circuit, we're speaking now, was $144,765. Our total expenditure was $151,596. So there's a variance of $6,831. So we, our income was $144,000. And our expenditure was even way over 151000 giving us a deficit of $6,800. In comparison to the past two years, there has been a major reduction in our deficit. And the main reason is increase in income, which includes our congregational assessments. May God continue to bless our Methodist family as we commit to a life of faithful and committed stewards of God's gifts and graces. Okay, our, demo, our devotional themes for the rest of this week. On Monday the 8th, faithfulness begins in our hearts. If you have a pen, maybe you can take note. On Monday, our devotional theme, faithfulness begins in our hearts. On Tuesday the 9th, faithfulness needs the root of reason. Faithfulness needs the root of reason. And the text, 1 Peter 3, verse 15. On Wednesday, our devotional theme is faithfulness is a life of decision. John 12, verse 42. On Thursday, 11th, Faithfulness saves when it converts into action. Faithfulness saves when it converts into action. James 2, verses 14. And on Friday, 12, faithfulness grows in the midst of challenges. Faithfulness grows in the midst of challenges. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. If you haven't got a pen to write your devotional themes, you could meet with the congregation stewards after service to get your theme for the day. You might notice there are no themes for Saturday. You can do some recycling. Okay, now we go to our birthdays. On our birthday list today, today we have Sister Anne Favrier, a birthday list. On the eighth, we have Joselle Gabriel, we have Jenna Lee Doxy and Aidan Hubert. Please stand. On the 9th, we have Ricardo Velasquez. On the 12th, we have Divet Charles. And on the 13th, Kelly Arendel. Now, the names which I have called and the birthdays, as I gave you, they are not present today. But if you know them personally, you know their telephone numbers, please give them a call and wish them happy birthday. Something could have kept them from coming to church this morning. So we will now have the birthday song for the two recipients. Good Lord bless you. Good Lord bless you. 
Okay, you can be seated. May the favor of God be with you all, and that the Lord bless you and keep you. Let the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you both and give you peace. Today we have visiting with us for the first time. We have Chevelle Felicier and Lil Lilani Felicier from San Susi. Could you please stand? And we have Moriah Favrier, niece of the Favriers. Could you please stand? We welcome you to this morning's service. And we hope that this morning's service will be an inspiration to you. Welcome once again, Shivel, Lelani, and Moriah. At this time, we are asked to remember our sick and shut in members. Those who have not been at service for quite a while and they are indoors, please remember. People like Brother Jawahir, Sister Dorothy Henry, Sister Steele, Sister Jardine, Brother Compton. Pay them a visit and give them a call. We want to, at this time to thank all of you for coming in this morning. We want to thank our choir members, our choir mistress, and we look forward to Reverend Sermon, which is always as inspiring as could be. <clears throat> A thought for this week. We are all works in progress in the hands of a loving God. He who began a good work in, in us all will carry it on to completion. Rest assured, we are his good work, regardless of how old we are, or at what stage of life we are in. Let me repeat, we all are works in progress in the hands of a loving God. He who began a work in us will carry it out to completion. And let us rest assured, we are his good work. And regardless of how old, how young, or whatever stage we are in life, we are in it and he will see it through completion. I do wish everybody a blessed Sunday and a very inspiring week ahead. I thank you for listening. Thank the stewards for the announcement. I will now invite the celebrants of the birthday to come forth for them to receive their blessings. <clears throat> Let us pray. A risen Lord who abides and is present with us, we uplift to you the life of Sister Anne Favre and Aidan as uh, they celebrate uh, today and this week their birthday. We pray of Sister Anne who is uh, a class leader and serve in various positions within this congregation. We uplift her life and uh, pray, O oh God, a fresh anointing that you will bless her in her workplace as she teaches, as she empowers the life of uh, youth. And we pray, O oh God, that you will, as a mother who uh, brings the life of her children and also the community in which she serves, we pray, O oh God, that you will guide her by the power of your Holy Spirit that as she celebrate another year of her life, that she will celebrate your goodness. Indeed, as the psalmist say, that she will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We pray, O oh God of Aden, we thank you for the confirmation of uh, the work of your spirit in his life. We thank you, God, for his studies. And we thank you that you have grown his faith and maturity in his life to worship and honor you with all that he does. We pray also for all those who are celebrating who are not present with us 
and we pray that you will look upon them with your favor and bless them with the riches of your glory. We pray this prayer in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Indeed, we thank God for the lives of those who celebrate their birthdays in our midst. And to all, um, just to note that every month we have been sending the newsletters. Uh, if you have not received, you can kindly send me your number or your email so we can uh, get you posted on what is happening up to date in the life of activities within the church uh, as uh, we try to have the communication flow in our membership uh, that all know what is uh, happening. As we continue in worship, we now sing to the glory of God, hymn 122, the strife is over, the battle done. We now recite together prayerfully our collect. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God the Father. Amen. Now I invite our readers to come forth for reading of God's word, which comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 35, Psalms 133, and 1 John chapter 1 to chapter 2, verse 2. Good morning. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 4, 32 to 35. The believers share their possession. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed 
private ownership of any possession, but everything they own was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave the testimony of, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought, deposit, and brought deposits of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. The reading is taken from Psalm 33, verses 1 to 4. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil in the head running down upon the beard, on the bed of iron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordered, ordained his blessing for over time, forevermore. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. The reading is taken from 1 John chapter 1 to 2 John verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Christ, our advocate. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours. Only by also for the sins of the world. This, my brothers and sisters, is the word of the Lord. We now sing to the glory of God, hymn 123, I serve a risen Lord, he is in the world today, and we will remain standing for the reading of the gospel. <coughs>
gospel reading comes to us from the book of John, gospel according to St. John, chapter 20. We read from verse 19 to 31. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said this, <clears throat> he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. <clears throat> A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the door was shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see hands. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Because you... But believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. May be seated. <clears throat> Did the hymn that we sang reminds us that we serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. We know that he is alive. We see the hand of his mercy. We hear the voice of his cheer. He lives, he lives. Christ lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along the life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Let us pray. Christ who lives within our hearts, make known to us by the power of your Holy Spirit, the message, the word that brings forth life. Sustain us, O God, with your sustaining grace, the blessedness of believing even as we do not see. We pray, O God, that the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Redeemer. We pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today, I invite us to reflect on the theme, the blessedness of a life of faith the blessedness of a life of faith. Everyone, whether religious or not, live with a degree of faith in something every day. When you came this morning, you had faith that the chairs, the pews will hold you up. None of us suspected that when you're going to sit, it's going to fall. You had faith. And for those who have uh, drived or came to work, uh, came to church, through your vehicles, you would have trusted that the vehicles that you were driving were working. The moment you put in the, the keys, the brakes were working, and you just had that faith. Everyone, whether they believe in God or not, has some degree of faith in something that helps them to go by each day. We have faith in our doctors, that when they prescribe, some of us just take whatever they prescribe, we go to the pharmacy, 
We don't even do any empirical research of what is in those pills, or sometimes we don't do it, sometimes we do it. We just take it and swallow it and have faith that it does what the doctor says it will do in our life. Thus, it reminds us that everyone cannot live without faith. We have to have faith in something in order for us to go by each day, that we don't always rely on to see things, the five senses. And here Jesus speaks about, in the story of the gospel, to Thomas, who wanted to see Jesus. You know, he was absent. So don't always be absent in things, because you may miss something. He was absent when Jesus appeared on the eve of resurrection. So when Jesus appeared to the disciples, he was not there. And when they told him, Jesus is alive, we have seen him physically, he is alive. He said, no, until I touch, until I put my hands in, I am not going to believe. So he had one week of unbelief before the others believe in Jesus. And when he had this conversation, when he saw Jesus, he believed in Jesus, and Jesus told him this thought. Have you believed because you have seen me, Thomas? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. What does that mean to us as a congregation, as people of God, who after 2,000 years have not seen physically the risen Christ? What does it mean to us? Would it make a difference in our life that God in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord who rose 2,000 years ago, turn again in St. Lucia today with the marks of the nails? Would it make a difference? What does Jesus' words to us, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen yet come to believe. Would it make a difference in your life? would make a difference in my life. What Jesus is trying to make known to Thomas is that it doesn't matter if he sees the physical Jesus and it doesn't make a difference in his life. And he becomes a follower of Jesus and devoted all and live up to what God wants. That means whether he sees the physical Jesus and believe, or he does not see the physical Jesus and still believe, but it makes a difference in his life. That is the most important thing in the life of faith. And that is why when we sing, I serve a risen Christ, he is in the world today. He lives, he lives, Christ lives today. There must be no difference of those who saw Jesus physically and believed and he transformed their lives. And for us today, who some of us may have not seen the risen Christ in so profound, miraculous way, yet we still believe. Today, this is, this is quite a long story, but I, I'll try and shorten it. There is a conversation between a professor and a student in a science setting. The professor asked the student, are you a Christian? The student said, yes, sir. Do you believe in God? Absolutely, sir. The professor then asks, is God good? The student said, sure. The professor says, how can you say that when my brother died of cancer, even though he prayed to God to heal him? Most of us would attempt to help others who are ill, but God didn't. How is it, is it that you say God is good? Student never responded and was in silence. Then the professor went on. You can't answer, can you? Let me start again, young fellow. Is God good? The student continued to say, yes. Is Satan good? No. Where does Satan come from? The student replied, from God. Then professor said, that's right. Tell me, son, is there evil in this world? The student said, yes. Evil is everywhere, the professor said, isn't it? And God did make everything, correct? The student said, yes. So who created evil? The student did not answer. 
Is there sickness, immorality, hatred, ugliness, all terrible things exist in the world, don't they? Yes, sir. So who created them? The professor then said, Science say that we have five senses you use to identify and observe the world around you. Tell me, son, have you ever seen God? The student said, no, sir. Tell us if you have ever heard God. No, sir. Have you ever felt God, tasted God, had a sensory perception of God? The student said, no, sir. I'm afraid I haven't. The professor said, yes, you, yet you still believe in him. The student said, yes. But the professor then said, according to the empirical, testable, demonstrable protocol of science, it says that God does not exist. Why, what do you say to that son? The student said, nothing. I have only my faith. The professor said, yes, faith. And that is the problem science has. Then the student begins to ask the professor, is there such a thing as heat? The professor said, yes. And is there such a thing as cold? The professor said, yes. And the student said, no, sir, there isn't. Sir, you can have lots of heat. You can have more heat. You can have less heat. You can have super heat. You can have mega heat. But we don't have anything called cold. Cold is only the absence of heat. It is only the description of the absence of heat. You cannot measure cold. Then the student asks, what about darkness? The professor says, is, is there such a thing as darkness? The professor said, yes. What is night if there isn't darkness? The student says, you are wrong again, sir. You can have low light, normal light, bright light, flashy light, but if you have no light constantly, you have nothing, and that is why we call it darkness. It's not darkness, it's the absence of light, and by describing the absence of light, we call it darkness. So what is the point you are trying to make, young man? So my point is, your philosophical premises is flawed. Flawed, can you explain? A student goes on, you are walking on the premises of duality. You argue that there is life and there is death, a good God and a bad God. You are viewing the concept of God as something finite, something that we can measure. So science can, can't even explain a thought. It, can't, uh, it, can't even it cannot even see electricity, magnetism and all this. Uh, but we still believe in what they do and there and they exist. So then the student asks, have you ever observed evolution with your own eyes, sir? The professor shook his head and smiled. Since no one has ever observed the process of evolution at work and can never even prove that that process is ongoing endeavor, are you not teaching your opinion, sir? Are you not science but a preacher? Is there anyone in the class who have ever seen the professor's brain? The student asked. Is anyone who has ever heard the professor's brain? Touch the professor's brain. Smell the professor's brain. No one answered. So the student says, so in the rules of science, empirically, demonstrably, protocol, our professor does not have a brain. How, does, how do we then trust his lectures? Then the professor says, I guess you have to take them on faith, son. And the student said, that is it, sir, exactly. The link between man and God is faith. That is all that keeps things alive and moving. And that is the message that I would like to leave with us today. 
in a world that people think that is faith does not exist anymore but each day people survive they do things in light of something they believe in whether it's god whether it's your doctor whether it's your nurse whether it's the car whether what you sitting on whether what you wearing you will believe in something and what makes a difference is what and who you believe in and jesus was in, was very much trying to make a thomas understand that life will always be having something that you may not see and even his life is resurrection that they, there may be thousands of generation later who may not have seen the risen christ yet they have still have to believe and thus quickly i have three points today to help us understand in this blessedness of faith that differentiate your faith in the chair that you are sitting on in the vehicle in the people in your faith in god first a blessed faith is not one which is dependent on a single event of christian life see our faith is not about a singular event in history whether or not jesus rose physically or not but rather about whether we allow christ to rise in our lives seeking to embody his teaching of sacrificial love in the world today what jesus was trying to make across to thomas uh, that he cannot depend his whole life on just having one single encounter with the risen lord and you know sometimes christian life today is about us looking for one miracle to confirm our life of faith to god and sometimes i see that our christian life has become event oriented we are event christian once i see a very dynamic preaching i experience a very dynamic dynamic experience my faith will be strong and it will make a difference in my life in the days to come what jesus was trying to put across to thomas for us as christians brothers and sisters in christ what god does in our life is not determined on just one moment one event but a life love long experience of god word work as we grow and grow and grow and experience god's work in our life every day as we are the living testimony of god's power he is alive in the world today and the second point that i invite us to reflect on a blessed faith produces spiritual living that what jesus was trying to tell um thomas uh, that it's not about his encounter that moment his faith was supposed to be a living faith that is living uh, lived out and as you know thomas would have gone to 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 take the message to india and died and spread the good news uh, st thomas it was the life of faith that brought him to this spiritual living and i draw to us two spiritual uh, two nar narratives uh, which is in scripture which is a challenge for us to this spiritual living in which faith helps us one in luke chapter 15, uh, 17 if you would see verse 5 the, the disciples ask jesus increase our faith increase our faith the background of it uh, is uh, that jesus asks the disciples so uh, to forgive to forgive to forgive not only once but so many times and when the disciples see that forgiving is hard they said increase our faith because it is always hard brothers and sisters and guys to forgive someone because when they continue to do if someone comes and steal 100 dollars this week the scripture demands that you have to forgive and you forgive then if the same person comes and still again next week 100 you would be less inclined to forgive you would want the person to to get something you know you would want some revenge and if it's five times 100 dollars and if it's 70 times and if it's 70 multiplied by 7 which is 490 the pain in us and that's why Jesus, the disciples said increase our faith you see the many issues
issues of the world today is unforgiveness and people who cannot trust God but always want to have revenge. The issue in Israel and Gaza is a long issue of people who cannot forgive each other because of something that has, has continued a cycle and vicious cycle of hatred or of life. If they begin to live out a life of faith, it will make a difference. The many problems that we have on our streets, the, the, the killings, the gang violence, and now you would see the shift in how our political life and political leaders live out their lives because people cannot forgive, cannot learn to forgive because they trust more in men and paying someone back exact what that person does back to you. And, and this leads to the second scenario in which Jesus says, do to others as you would want them to do to you. In this, uh, instead of treating people the way they treat us, uh, which would result in paying back evil for evil, Jesus thought the opposite. Treat others the way you want them to treat you. And you will always want people to treat you nice, better. And here the principle means that our behavior and character as Christians are unconditional. Not conditional to what people do to you, but conditional to the expectation of Christ and Savior's way of life. And thus our life of faith as a community, brothers and sisters, in Christ is deeply rooted in spiritual living. See, our society today, our, the presence of a, our risen Lord must be made known in how we live our lives every day. You cannot say that St. Lucia is a Christian country when leaders tear each other up and try to look down upon each other and step on each other. You cannot say that St. Lucia is a Christian country when we cannot, as Christians, live together and walk together and pray together. You cannot say that we are a Christian country if in your family you cannot speak to your brother or your sister. You're not in good relationship with them. What Jesus is saying to Thomas, Thomas, blessed are those who do not see yet still believe. Meaning, blessed are those who even though they have not seen physically the risen Christ, but they are living a spiritual life as a living testimony that Christ is alive today. And that is what we are called. And lastly today, the last and final point, brothers and sisters in Christ, is a blessed faith is a faith of assurance in salvation of our soul. A blessed faith is a, a faith in assurance in our, of our soul. And here I draw to us from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8 and verse 9, in which 1 Peter says, Peter says, although you have not seen me, him, sorry, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. This is important, brothers and sisters in Christ, because Peter was speaking to a people who were persecuted. People who, when the world look at them, it seems that they have been defeated. They, they don't have any economic prosperity, there seems to be no sense of blessedness, but they continue to believe in Jesus. In which he says, you, he is not even with you, yet you still love him. You are killed, your, your people, those who are around you, they suffer, yet you still believe in him. And you live your life with joyfulness. And he continues to say in verse 9, because you have received the highest blessing that is the salvation of 
your soul. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the greatest blessing is not for you to have a big house, for you have to go to a good job, for you to come and see the church is filled. There is things, the biggest blessing of life of faith is the salvation of your soul. When you can say to your soul that I am saved, that I have been redeemed, that I have experienced the goodness of God, that Jesus who has risen 2,000 years ago is alive and he is in my heart right now. And we have that assurance. In ministry, it's always challenging, brothers and sisters in Christ. Always challenging. Sometimes when you see that nothing seems to be working, people say oh, all sorts of things to you. Sometimes people treat you good. Sometimes people treat you bad. Sometimes you go to some places that you have not gone before. Sometimes new experiences. Sometimes blessing comes. Sometimes it seems that the blessing comes in very hard ways that you cannot and hard to accept. Blessings comes in a form of a difficulty. Blessing comes in a form of death. Blessing comes in ways that we do not expect. But for you and me, the blessedness of your faith is the salvation of your soul. And I think that is the most important thing in our lives. So as we go through this month in this Easter celebration that Jesus is risen, some of us always just want one event. Go there, I experience Jesus, I feel that he is, and we go and we do whatever we do. Then when the event finish, also our faith is finished. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your faith is more than an event. And sometimes uh, we think the faith uh, is about meeting the physical Jesus. But we are reminded today that our faith is about our spiritual living, how you live your life, how you forgive, how you love and treat others. That is the most important thing. And how we live in Zalusha is important. We should tell our drivers to drive as Christians. You know, when I now go close to red lights, I don't I am very cautious even when it's green. You know why? Because there are those from the other side, even when it's red, it says stop. They run through red lights. And that is when we look at everything, the small things in our lives, we are challenged how we live our faith every day as God's people. And the final point that I would have shared, as Peter spoke to the, to, to the people who were suffering, who were persecuted for their faith, he told them that the blessedness of their faith, although they did not see Jesus, they continued to love him, although they did not see Jesus now, they continue to believe in him, but they have received the blessing of their faith that is the salvation of their soul. As you continue to come to church, as you continue to do whatever God is doing, the greatest benefit of church, brothers and sisters in Christ, is not what the world think that is blessed. That is the only important thing is the blessing that you have is the salvation of your soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we affirm our faith in Christ, we will now see the Nation Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us human beings and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnated from the Virgin Mary and was born a human being. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, and who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Now we have the tithes and offering. Hear us, O Lord, as we offer all what we have given today financially and we should offer our lives, our talents, our time, and our treasure to love you more and to serve you as the testimony of our faith that we, O God, will live for every moment of our lives as holy moments unto you. We pray a blessing and bring forth all the needs within our community and as we offer ourselves to be your hands and feet to serve as you serve in and through us. We bring these prayers of blessing. We pray in and through the name of Jesus who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now sing our communion hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. 424. Turn to our order on page 76. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and fitting to do. It is good and a pleasant thing, joyful and salutary always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Lord God ever-living, ever-blessed, almighty, all-loving through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. You created all things, made us in your image, and when we had fallen into sin, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. You raised him up from the dead and you exalted him to the glory of your right hand, where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us in witness of his glory and honor. You poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body, making us living members of your holy church and enabling us to stand before you to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty acts. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread into his holy hands and looking up to heaven, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again.
Therefore, Father, in obedience to his command, we do this in remembrance of him, praying that you will accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ and become united with him. And as we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, we pray that you will bring us with your whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To Lord whom with you, O Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory from all who dwell on earth and in heaven throughout the ages of ages. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body, because we share the one loaf and partake of the same drink. You may be seated. Let us prayerfully submit ourselves in faith as we trust God with our lives. Let's say together. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy, and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs from your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him, and he in us. Amen. The table of the Lord is prepared. All are welcome. Can we fill up the spaces and for every, can we ensure that all are filled?
Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. We thank you all for our service this morning, for those who are in chapel, those who are joining in online. And I pray God's blessings with you and be with your family as we see the blessedness of the life of faith in which we are called, that we live by the faith of God, who is alive and well, who is with us, that we do not depend on only one event of our lives, but it is a journey that we experience the risen Christ in our lives every day. And also our faith is a living faith, that we are able to forgive, that we are able to treat others in a better way, in a way that reflects the living Christ. And also the blessedness of our faith is the salvation of our souls as we have the assurance of God's salvation in our life. What happens around you does not determine how faithful you are to God because you know that he is alive, he is in you. You continue to press on in the life of faith. We now sing to the glory of God, hymn 126, I know that my Redeemer lives.
our Redeemer lives. The psalmist says in Psalms 27, 13, and 14, I am sure I shall see the goodness of our God in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that you do not wait alone. God has given us one another for this journey of faith to help one another. Know that you do not wait alone. Christ is with us. Be encouraged and encourage one another. Go and share the good news that Christ is risen and alive. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Blessed month of April to everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, Sister Gloria. For